North America, 66 million years ago. A time when mighty herbivores shaped the landscape. From Triceratops to Edmontosaurus, and even the huge Alamosaurus. Creatures that even the apex predator gives respect to. That being the mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex. These predators can reach over 12 meters in length, and exceed 9 tons in weight. Potentially the most powerful terrestrial predator to ever walk the Earth. At this time of year, however, many of the adults take a more nurturing role, as it is time for them to lay and watch over their eggs. The females construct large nests that their eggs are hidden in, and then they guard the nests from frets while the males go out hunting. Once the male has returned, they will swap duties, and the females will get a chance to feed. One mother is having a harder time than most. She has fallen ill over the last few days, and barely moved as a consequence. Her mate is also late. It's possible he had to go much further than normal to get a meal, but now she is having to consider that perhaps he has been injured or killed by one of the many dangerous herbivores that they hunt. The female rests in the shade, drifting in and out of sleep her body mostly obscured by the foliage around her nest. If anything is foolish enough to try and raid the nest, her strong senses of smell and hearing will likely pick them up well before they get close to the nest. Her long vigil continues, but she is not alone. Her only company comes in the most unlikely form. Scurrying around the nest, and even herself, is a tiny Triarachungus. This one meter long theropod belongs to the Alvarosaurids, a group of small bird-like predators that usually have a single finger with a long hooked claw. The little carnivore darts back and forth, pecking at the ground, gathering up insects with his thin jaws. But curiously, he doesn't seem concerned about the massive T-Rex only a few meters away. Next to the giant, he appears minuscule. Even so, the mother sees almost everything, even tiny mammals, as a threat to her nest. So why not him? This is because these two species have a symbiotic relationship. The Triarachunchus will eat any insects and small animals like mammals and lizards that could burrow into the nest and feed on the eggs, but they will never try and take any of the host's eggs. So they get a meal, and in return, for being an extra layer of protection of the nest, the mother T-Rex won't eat them. Staying close to the multi-ton carnivore also gives the Triarachunchus protection from their own predators that will stay well clear of any place a Tyrannosaurus Rex is inhabiting. The mother watches the feathered carnivore sprint and jump around her nest. Its movement so sporadic at times, she has trouble tracking it. Nonetheless, its daily activities keep her entertained, and keep her mind off her illness. Sometimes he even moves right up close to her jaws, showing no fear at all, though he is looking for any parasites on her skin that he could pick off, as when she is motionless, he ironically sees her as another source of potential food. Overall, she finds the small alvarosaur rather entertaining, and a good way to pass the time while she waits for her mate to return. And he is a capable guard for when she drifts off to sleep. The mother is awoken by a call she has never heard before. The Triarachunchus is screeching fiercely. Groggily lifting her head up, the mother sees the small predator standing in front of her nest, jumping up and down while barking at her nest. The next moment, another dinosaur lifts its head up from the other side of the nest. It was an oviraptor called Anzu, a two meter tall omnivore that was common in this area. He had managed to go undetected by the sleeping T-Rex. However, before he could manage to steal an egg, the Triarachungus spotted him and blown his cover. The Anzu was glaring at the much smaller theropod and hadn't noticed the mother T-Rex lifting her head. When she started to stand, however, the Oviraptor took one look at the Titan rising off the ground, and sprinted in the opposite direction, disappearing back into the forest. The female still felt ill, but was feeling a little better. As she lowered herself back down, 
she saw the Chaira Chunka Saigong back to darting around her nest, constantly looking for food, and constantly on alert, which made it easier for her to go back to sleep. Hours pass and the sun is beginning to set. The female Tyrannosaurus wakes from her slumber and lifts her head off the ground, drawing in slow breaths. Suddenly, she hears the Chaira Chungus call out again, but it is not a call of alarm, but one of fear. The Tyrannosaur rises to her feet and looks in the call's direction. She sees the Chaira Chungus running, and right behind it is a Dakota Raptor. The 5 meter Dromaeosaur was chasing the small Alvarosaurid and was too close to avoid. The Dakota Raptor snatched up the smaller theropod by the tail in her jaws, lifting it high as the Chaira Chungus flailed in a panic, and then the Dakota Raptor began to shake its head from side to side. Her trapped prey began to scream. The Tyrannosaurus saw all this happen in a flash, and then, for the first time in her life, she moved to save a species that wasn't her own. The mother took a step forward, and at the same time, let out a deafening roar. A roar that made everything in the forest shrink in fear. The Dakota Raptor didn't even know the T-Rex was there, so when she heard the roar, and then saw the nine-ton monster striding towards her, she simply froze in terror. The T-Rex scooped up the Dakota Raptor in her jaws, in one clean motion, causing the Dromaeosaur to release the Triera Chunkus, which plummeted to the ground, landing ungracefully on his back. The Tyrannosaur held her now screeching prey in her jaws, and bit down. The Dakota Raptor was lightly built, with hollow bones to be swift and agile. The Tyrannosaurus Rex had the most powerful bite force of any terrestrial animal ever to have lived. Capable of cleaving through even the hard armor of ankylosaurs. So when she bit down, the Dakota Raptor's body simply exploded. The upper body and the lower body came apart in a shower of blood and ichor, blanketing the ground beneath the T-Rex and splattering the surrounding foliage. Organs, muscle, and shattered bone splattered across the earth and the T-Rex's face. A brutal looking kill that was in fact near instantaneous for the Dromaeosaur. The hungry Tyrannosaurus Rex began to gather up the scattered remains, swallowing them down eagerly. As she did so, she saw the injured Chiarachunkus had moved under a tree and was tending his wounds. He had also been drenched in the Dakota Raptor's blood, but he was alive, a fact that the Tyrannosaurus found herself happy to know. The two polar opposite carnivores fed and cleaned together, and eventually went back to their usual stations. Together, they appeared not too different to the tale of the lion and the mouse. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the last of the Alvarosaurids, Treachunkus. The first remains of Treachunkus were discovered in 1980, and then were seemingly forgotten about until 2018, when it was briefly mentioned in the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology abstract book. Finally, in 2020, it was formally described, given the name Treachunkus prairiensis. The genus name being a translation of Captain Hook, a nod to the character from the Peter Pan series. The species name means from the prairie, a reference to the plains of Montana where it was discovered. Treachunkus is known mostly from its arms, feet, and legs. With this, its size and place in the dinosaur family tree would be identified. In life, it grew to one meter long, stood 50 centimeters high, and weighed around one to two kilograms. It was a theropod, and belonged to the barely known family called Alvarosauridae. These dinosaurs were all small, between 50 centimeters and 2 meters. They had long, thin legs, short arms with usually only one digit, thin bird-like necks plus heads, and were covered in feathers. They are known from the late Cretaceous and have been found in North and South America as well as across Asia. The most famous of this group is Mononychus, which starred in the Prehistoric Planet series. 
Treyarchankis has many of the features listed, including very long legs and short arms with one digit, on the end of which was a large curved claw, hence its name referring to Captain Hook. Alvarezorids in general are thought to have fed on small prey, and given their lightly built long skulls, it's even been hypothesized they may have been insectivores. But not just pecking at the ground or foraging through leaf litter, they may have used their large claw to dig into bark or termite mounds in order to excavate a meal. It's even been proposed that their long jaws may have had a long tongue similar to an anteater or an armadillo. Now the muscles on their arms are quite strong despite their size, however one does have to consider that the arms would have been held very close to the body, so in order to use its claw it would have had to almost press itself against any surface it was trying to dig into. But they clearly had to be using that claw for something, otherwise the limbs would have likely become vestigial, like those of Carnotaurus for instance. Triarachunkus lived in the Hell Creek Formation, which is dated to right before the end of the Cretaceous period, 66 million years ago, making it the youngest known, Alvarosaurid. This formation is very well studied and has produced many fossils of some of the most famous dinosaurs, such as Tyrannosaurus rex, Triceratops, Ankylosaurus, and Edmontosaurus, plus many others, including Anzu, Ornithomimus, Taurosaurus, Pachycephalosaurus, and Denvisaurus. The discovery of an Alvarosaurid is a great find as small animals, especially insectivores, are often overlooked when they live in the presence of giant megafauna. They were likely quite common in their environment, though rarely seen as they would have had to stay hidden from the many predators that could make a meal of them. Triarachunkus may have filled a role similar to modern ground birds, with prehistoric planet depicting its mononychus similar to a roadrunner. Looking at its skeleton it's not hard to see why. They were likely fleet-footed and nimble, though probably couldn't put up much of a fight against anything larger or heavier than itself. Nonetheless, the family were quite widespread. The reason we know so little about them is because their bones were so delicate they had less of a chance to fossilize. But the image of these little guys darting in between the legs of huge herbivores, or nimbly dodging the jaws of powerful predators, is something I'd like to see a little more of in future media. But what do you think of Chiarachunkus? And for my question of the week, do you think specialized insectivores in the dinosaur family are more common than we think? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching. Chiarachunkus, more like Chiarachungus. No, wait, Chiarachungus. Yeah, that'll get the zoomers watching.